Hey, it's Joy and um, Alyssa is here too. And we're just going to share with you some of the new titles that we have. Um, well, I have the new catalog here. And so we're going to start by going to the first page of the new catalog. And we're just going to go through here and show you some of the um, new titles that we have and some that we've received. And then others are not in stock yet and we haven't received those yet. So um, we're going to start with Alyssa and she's going to start on page four of your big catalog in Babies and Toddlers. Hey everyone, I'm super excited about some of the new baby titles that we got. Um, for those of you who are around, um, a couple years ago we used to have these really cute stroller books and yay, we have new stroller books. One of the fun thing about these new stroller books is they actually have this cute bungee aspect to them and it has a little hook. We used to only have a hook. And they're nice little board books. Sorry. <laughs> um, they're cute little board books and they go through. This one is teaching them all about their very first animals. And as you can see, they even have like beginner finger trails in the books and little peek through slots that you can um, get to to the next page. So they're really, really cute. They have two of these. They have um, the regular animals as well as having the jungle animals. So that's fun. We also have two new That's Not Mine. So we have That's Not My Meerkat, which is going to be a bestseller, everybody. And then we also have That's Not My Cow. And it just follows this typical storyline of all the That's Not Mice. Um, they're kind of cute little cows, though. Aren't they cute? Yay. And then um, one of my new favorite series that we have um, put out are these brand new Slide and See ones. So this one here is the Under the Sea version. They also have the um, regular slide and see animals, which we got in the spring. But as you can see, we have fun little, like the dolphin, you know, is moving, and the, um, the jellyfish. I love this one. <coughs> I'm very tactile, as you can tell. So these are just really super fun. Um, this one is fun, as you can see, because as it moves, it moves more than one area of the page. So these are some of the cool um, new, three new big of the, Three new baby books, sorry. Um, Joy's going to also um, show us one of the new toddler type books that we have too. Hey, okay. So this is a toddler book and it is my very first space book. It has those strong pages as we all expect it to have for the very first books. And then um, there's no flaps. So you're, you know, a lot of parents aren't so excited about buying a toddler book with flaps and there's different layouts um, but there's no flaps which is really good for this age group um, and I will be reading it to my two-year-old soon yay so it's pretty awesome all right we'll go back to Alyssa so um, on the next page which would be page six in your catalog we got a bunch of new sticker books I only have three of them right now but we got um, build your own motorcycles. We have first sticker book cycling. Um, we have a space book, a first colors, wartime fashion, lots of fun different ones. So I'm going to show you the three that I currently have. Um, one of them is the new astronaut space book. It seems like Usborn has really had an emphasis on space. Um, this catalog go around. There's a, a five or six different space related things, which is really great for those kids who love astronauts and you know space. Ha ha ha. <laughs> So this space book is very cool. It shows you um, space people from the past, and they get to put the costumes on them. It shows how they do like wilderness training. Sorry, always trying to figure out how to get this in the camera best. Wilderness training. Um, but one of the things that my daughter loved is they actually talk about the future of space. Um, this is an International Space Station picture here. But um, they show you, you actually get to build your own life on Mars area. And she's so excited about this. And she, before she's even putting the stickers down, she's been telling me like, she's been plotting out like, okay, all the people need to live near the middle. And so they have all these different little pods. I'll see if I can find that real quick. So you can see here all the different stickers. So they get to make their own like community up there. So it's really fun because it deals with the past, the current, as well as who knows, maybe even the future. Um, one of my other daughter's favorites, um, she wants to be an architect. Um, it's the home designer. So it's kind of fun. We have the sticker dinner, sticker dolly fashion designers, and we've had them a lot with clothing and stuff like that. And oh my, I just realized, I am so sorry, everybody. You've been hearing me talk and not seeing my picture. 
<laughs> that is still on joy. Okay, so real quickly, I'm sorry. We're doing this in one take. So you get the one take version of us. Here's the astronaut sticker book. I'm sorry. Yes, you get us as we really are. So here's the pictures. Um, Ellen Shepard and all those different people. Um, this is the page that I was just telling you all about. I'll show you again. Um, anyway, so this is where they get to build the life on Mars. And this is like the little um, stickers that it shows. I am so sorry about that, you guys. Um, so this is the home fashion designer. So it's like the ones where they got to do the spring, summer, fall fashion. Except for now, they get to actually design like textiles and, um, you know, how would the bedroom look and how would, um, you know, a retro kitchen. And so it's very fun because it gives the kids um, a new look at it because design is about so much more than just fashion, but that seems to be where the emphasis has been. But so now they get to put it in, you know, putting together um, a bedroom right here. Or Well, this is a dressing room because, you know, we all want a closet that big, just saying. And I want that clean too. But, um, you know, and then we have like, you know, putting like stuff on a wall and stuff like that. So it's a really cool way to be able to introduce them to that. Um, and then the last one I'm going to show you real quick before Joy is going to share with us again two more fantastic new titles is um, my first um, book about how things grow. And this is a sticker book. goes through. It explains pollination. Um, explains how, like what happens during all the seasons to plants. Um, deciduous forests. Um, how plants grow and they get to put all the different um, stickers and seeds and stuff like that on it So it's a really great book especially like for homeschoolers as um, They deal with like that whole how things grow type unit um, at those early ages. This would be a great um, Resource to have along with it or just for those kids who just love going outside and like picking weeds and giving them to you as gifts um, These this would be a great book for those kids too And now I'm going to actually show you joy so she can show you titles Okay, I have two more sticker books that are on page seven, and um, this is so cool because we're going on a cruise, and so we have a, thou a thousand and one things to spot in the sea, and if my daughter is all about sea life, and she's five. She's all about this, and mermaids, and all the different sea creatures, and kids that like the show Octonauts would really like this as well because um, they're learning about sea life and things to do on the beach and how to help the animals. So, like, there's sea otters and sea urchins, um, turban sails, black rockfish, kelp crabs, kelp bass. So, tons of things to spot and stickers to go in the back, just like the other sticker books. So, super fun. And then... We have all these big maze books, and I bought my daughter one, and she just, like, was overwhelmed with these huge mazes. So I was really excited to get this. It's my first maze book. Um, you might see markings in here, but that's okay. Um, so they're just a little more simplified mazes. And then um, in all these different, like this one's in water, and this one is like a pumpkin patch. So they're really fun. And then in the back is a key with all the answers um, for the parents or the kids to check their work. So that's really fun. And we'll go back to Alyssa, and she's going to be on page eight. Actually, I have two more for page oh, seven. Oh, okay. It's okay. So um, two new things that we're going to get that we that aren't available yet is um, two more fly and fold like paper airplanes, but they're going to be spaceships and dragons, just so you guys know ahead of time. But it's the, it's the same style. But um, I was going to show you the first up is the vintage fashion coloring book. So for girls who are into fashion, maybe people who have bought all those sticker dolly dressings before, this is a great one for them. It goes through... Um, and shows you different fashion throughout time. So like this is nautical fashion, and it takes you from the 1910s all the way to the 1950s and shows you the different styles that we've, we've had. Um, let's see here. Don't know where I'm gonna end up. Um, pants, it shows you the differences in pants, and wow, we have had some really weird pants. That's all I have to say, and I'm kind of glad I live in the time period I live in. Anyway, so this is just really cool because it goes through the history of what different clothing looks like 
and allows them to be able to draw that. And then, and I'm so excited about this, I can't begin to tell you, I love the mosaic sticker flowers. Some people don't know this still, but the other mosaic sticker animals, these are reusable, not just repositionable, they are reusable. All the pages, as you can see from looking at this, are really glossy. And that's because the stickers can come up and down um, on them. So in the corner, it shows you different patterns that you can use to make different um, flowers. Oh, and this one's really cool. If you can see it, it shows um, like climber and creeper flowers, and it has little things on there. And then in the back, it has all the different flower shapes so that you can make them as a mosaic on there. And then when you're done, because a lot of kids don't want to try to have to figure out how to put them all back on here, the nice part is on the back of all these books, they have these fold out pages where you can put all the different um, stickers if you don't want to have them just hanging out on these pages. So I love this one. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great addition to the, um, the animals one. And I'm actually going to try to bundle them together at um, different booths to be able to sell them together. And I'm really excited about that. Anyways, Joy is going to show us one of the um, new ones. We're on page eight now. Yes. And she's going to, oh, nope, we're not on page eight. I don't know where we are. Where is that one? Sorry. We are, I don't know, but we're going to show you. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna, she's going to show you something on page nine. Anyway, so over to Joy. Okay, I'm on page nine, and this is pencil and pen games. So pencil and paper games, I'm sorry. So I went on a ton of road trips when I was a kid, and I totally needed this book because my mom would like be like, oh, let's draw dots on the paper, and let me see if I can remember that game. And then we just like make up our own game. But if we had this book, it would be so cool. My five-year-old's all about it because she loves to play tic-tac-toe, and tic-tac-toe is missing in here because she pulled them all out. Um, yeah, so the pages are tear apart, so you can just pull them out easily and then work your little game. There's hangman and four in a row, um, hive, and there's instructions in front of each section. Oh, yeah, so it tells you how to play the game. And then it gives you multiple pages to play that game, um, which I think is really cool because they don't have to recreate it on another piece of paper or anything. It's all right here in this book. All they need is this book and a pencil, and their road trip is totally um, occupied. So there's games in here I've never heard of, and I'm really excited to learn them. Um, and there's actually 202 pages in this book that you can tear out and use um, on road trips or at restaurants. Just pull out a couple of sheets once you learn the game, and then you stick them in your purse and take them to the restaurant, and you got a game at the restaurant. So it's a great little entertainer, and we're going to go back to Alyssa. Wow, I'm actually excited about that. I hadn't opened that one yet, so thank you, Joy. I'm totally going to put it in my purse now. <laughs> Um, so I want to show you, they came out with a bunch of new activity packs. Um, they're going to have, and they don't have them out yet, they're going to have two um, white clean activity ones. Um, they're going to have books the same size as our activity packs. Um, they're going to be starting school and getting ready for school books. Um, they have a new space pack, and they have a new sticker dolly girl version, for lack of a better way to say it, version. But this is a step-by-step -step drawing activity pack. Again, it comes in the cute little handle contained case and it has uh, a condensed version of step-by-step -step drawing book, step-by-step -step drawing animals, and a step-by-step -step -step drawing people. And then it also gives them a whole book that's just blank paper so that they, if they're in like a plane or a car and, you know, they've used up the space that comes in the book because as you know, each book has a little bit of space. It makes it so they can create their own scenes, mixing and matching all the stuff from the different books, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, we did get um, two new two new white clean books. Yeah, I'm kind of like all over. That's okay. I tried. So these are on page 11, but I'm going to end up going back to page 9 because my books got out of order, but that's okay. You all love me anyways, hopefully. So these are white clean beginning pen control and white clean pen control. And a lot of people ask, are they based, you know, what are they like? So I wanted to be able to show you a little bit inside. So as you can see, we do a lot of the tracing like um, we normally do. Um, the beginning pen control focuses mostly on just the tracing over dotted lines, okay? 
So that's the beginning pen control. The, the regular pen controls, like the next step up, kind of solidifies that and makes them like work on a few more skills. So again, we're doing the tracing over the lines. But then we also move into like tracing over like the squiggly lines. Sorry, the sun has decided to come into my house now. And then we have some very, very beginner dot to dots to kind of get them started on how to do that, as well as some beginning mazes. All of these things are really important to helping kids learn um, better pen control. And then this is so cute. I'm so excited. Okay, I know how many of you heard. One, we have the new slot together, um, Victoria Dollhouse. Totally in love with that. Cannot wait to get it. I don't know when it's coming back in, but I'm going to... Yes, I'm gonna enjoy it. But this is a really cute new one too. It's the Press Out Paper Town. So this is very durable. What they do is they give you all these different little things and they have tabs, okay? And they all tab together to make a little city. I'm just gonna show you here on the back, like a little example, Oop, right there. So there's like this little house here and a little guy. So the whole little village comes to like play. So. This is one of my cool ideas for this book, okay? One of the things that you can do is you can have your kids use it with da, 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 those little whoa, Hot Wheels cars. So like the little Hot Wheels cars are just about the right size. So it's a great way, because my daughters have always liked those. Um, and I know that they say they're boy things, but my kids have always liked them. And so this is a great way for those little Hot Wheels cars to have a Hot Wheels town that's like fun and cute and stuff like that at the same time. But they have a bunch of different um, things. They have a marketplace, a town hall, um, you can see right here, a cafe, um, a flower shop, and I can't read that one, a sweet shop, because we all need some sweets in our lives. Anyway, so these are just really cute. They're very easy for kids to put together too. So I'm super excited about that one. And Joy is going to now tell us about the newest one in the phonics series. Yay, okay. So I'm going to tell you about Raccoon on the Moon. And he's a little raccoon, and he goes on an adventure. Um, it's just a normal phonics series book, as we expect. Um, and he takes an adventure um, to go to space. So it's really fun. And one of the sounds that this works on is Z, which I think is really cool because, like, Zach and Zoom – and um, zip. So I like that because that's not a sound that's in the other phonics books that I've read with my daughter. So I'm excited about it. And I think they'll love it. So I think next is Alyssa again. We like bouncing back and forth. <laughs> um, so I'm I love the write and draw your own comic books. I liked the write and um, the write your own storybook. Well, they've come out with a new one. Um, actually, they've come out with two new ones, but only one of them's in stock right now. The first one's my first story writing book. This is going to be good for your kids who are like first, second graders, you know, who they're just kind of getting comfortable. It really helps them to be able to use like better adverbs, better verbs, better adjectives in their writing. So it's trying to teach them how to do those things. But this one is great um, in the continuation of the series. And this is the Write Your Own Adventure Stories. So th what they do, it's very similar to the style of how they did it. So, um, you know, right here, this is a suspense story. And they actually lay this the, um, the foundation of the story for you ahead of time. Oh, man. Sorry. Um, they laid the foundation ahead of time for you. And it explains them how to um, how to create suspense and stories, not just to like, here, here's a great little setting for you, not figure it out. They like sit there and they try to help you understand how a great suspense story is written. Um, they talk about animal heroes. And it's like, you know, things that say, what kind of animal is your hero? Does it live in the wild, in the zoo, or is it a family um or is it with a family of humans? So they go through, and again, it just has tons and tons of different writing prompts. Um, this is going to be great for homeschoolers, um, for like creative writing kind of classes. Um, I think it'll also be just popular with um, within schools for kids like at book fairs, kids who like to write and who are creative. It's going to be a fantastic resource for them. Um, and speaking of those kids who are liking that kind of more analytical thing, Joy is going to talk to us about one of our new science releases. 
Hi, my dog has decided to play with me while I'm here. So she brings me the ball and it squeaks. You'll know why. So um, this is 100 things to know about science. And it is for that inquisitive kid who loves facts. It is full of information. Um, these are just paper books. It's full color, beautiful little illustrations. Um, it talks about lightning, um, bridges, and how transportation works. Um, the Earth has two North Poles. The Earth is the Earth's magnetic poles, um, oil underground, and where it comes from, which I think that's a big deal here because there's it's all about the oil in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, so it's just full of amazing science facts. Like all mechanical devices are based on six simple machines. Every year, Arctic terns fly from the Arctic to, to the Antarctic and back again, which is interesting. So there's also, um, it's just a really good little factual book. It's a great size. It's not huge, so they can carry it in their backpack or wherever they want to go to learn more about science. So um, I think we go back to Alyssa, and we're going to turn the page. And speaking of science, we have the Astronaut's Handbook. This book is super cool because it basically will take you through what it would be like to become an astronaut. Um, and it actually has you starting your astronaut adventure over in Russia. And you, you get to be able to come be part of it. You know, are you cut out for space? But then it goes through and it talks about like, the advanced training. This goes great with the sticker book because it covers a lot of the same thing, just in a whole lot more detail. You know, mission-specific training, um, like how you suit up, what are you gonna put on you? Hang on here. Oh, man, come on, sun. The sun doesn't love me today. That's okay. Um, and then it talks about like flying, like how do you eat food? How are you gonna go to the bathroom? Um, all of these things are things that kids do wonder, I know, because we went to, the, um, to Houston, to the NASA Center, and they went, and this is a lot of the same stuff that they're going to learn, but it's a really fun, you know, like, welcome, welcome, you are now entering Star City in Russia, where astronauts from all over the world come to train. And so it's, like, really fun written, and it's basically, like, as if you were going to be an astronaut, here's your handbook on how to do it. So I'm super excited about that for our sciencey kids, um, girls and boys, because it's a great way for them to be able to explore more. And speaking of that, I have a kid who is asking for it. So I will give it to them while we flip over to Joy while she shares with us one of the um, one of the new series that we're getting. Okay, this is Lift the Flap que First Questions and Answers. So it's kind of like our question and answer book, but it's the first question and answer. And it's a lift the flat book. And so this is just talking about one question they may have, how flowers grow. And then inside here, this is a really cool flap. There's like four of them and then the flower opens. So it shows you how the flower began and then it turns into a full sunflower. Um, and so that's part of the process here. It says what happens next, the flower opens and then what are the main parts of a plant and it takes this whole flower and goes through all the different parts of the plant and then um, why do plants have flowers where do seeds come from who plants all the seeds and it talks about how the wind can blow and plant seeds how insects and animals can plant seeds and then why do the leaves fall and it goes through fall, winter, spring, and summer, and what happens to the tree at each season. And then the biggest, strangest, and smelliest flowers. So it's a really fun Lift the Flat book, and I expect that we're probably going to see a lot more of these. At least we hope so. So um, we got a new one in the Look Inside series, which is a step above pink and, peak inside and a step beneath, supposedly, the sea insides. We're also going to be getting Look Inside Jungle, and we got Look Inside Trains back in March, if you remember. Um, look, in, look Inside Food basically takes us on a journey of how our food gets from the farm or the ocean or wherever to our table. So... You know, it shows um, different foods. I love this. There's flaps in here that come down to explain things more. There's flaps within the flaps. Um, again, lots of fold-out pages, too. Um, 
And then, so like we talked about how fruits and vegetables are, food from animals, food from the sea, and then sweet things, you know, the things we probably shouldn't eat, but we all really love. And then lastly, why do we eat? Um, and it talks about carbohydrates, um, proteins, milks, kind of like food pyramid type of things without talking about being a food pyramid. Um, so anyways, that's fun. Also, we don't have this book, but Joy was showing you the question and answers. The first one, we also got a new one called Question and Answers about the world, which I'm going to guess from looking at the cover is going to be kind of like geography based, <laughs> just so you know. Um, we also got Sea Inside Famous Palaces. Um, that was back in um, March, but we also got a new one here, Sea Inside Exploration and Discovery. For our inquisitive kids, once again, this is going to be a fantastic title um, for those kids who just like to explore and discover. Um, it takes us through history, and it shows different things. It starts with um, the Vikings, Columbus, um, Ma not Magellan, yes, no, Cortez, sorry, my brain is shutting off about the explorers. Um, it talks about natural discoveries, um, the Cook Islands, Galapagos, um, when Endeavor went out to the Cook Islands. Um, talks about the interior of lands when we first um, went and did the, um, like Lewis and Clark, when they went and explored America. Talks about the race for the poles and, you know, which country was going to get there first. Bonus points to you if you know which one made it. Do you? You can post at the end if you do. Um, and then the final frontiers. And I love this because the final frontier is not just the sky, it's also the ocean. We know so little about the ocean and it makes it the most part of our planet. So it's really cool to help the, help the kids really start to understand that there's still so much left to explore and the previous pages have given them the thought that who knows, they could be the ones to explore and discover new things. Um, Anyway, so it's just a really great book with lots of flaps as usual, um, and I'm super excited. I hope they actually get more like this in that series. Um, next, we are going to talk. Oh, so now we have some new chapter books. Sorry, I can't remember it was me. So we're on page 14 now. Um, they came out with a brand new series called the Fairy Ponies series. I'll be honest, I got this in my Presence Club box about an hour ago, so <laughs> I've not read much, but it's a book about fairy ponies. Um, so one thing I do like about this series though is that it's kind of got like two color illustrations so as you can see rather than just having the um, the pages normally where the like with the black and white illustrations sorry I'm trying to figure out what for you to see this here they also have added a little bit of the pink to this one um, they also have to go along with this they have the fairy ponies coloring book so they've got three books in the series, and they also have a coloring book, and I have a hand reaching out for this book now. Um, we also got two new books in the Pony Craze Princess series. I'm not going to go into them that much because they've been in our catalog already, but just want to let you see them. Um, we are going to go over to Joy, and we, are no we don't have any of the seasonal titles yet, so sorry. Um, but she is going to introduce you to, to two of the most amazing new picture books that I'm totally madly in love with. I'm so excited about these two books. They're from Kane Miller. Um, and this is Animally. You see? I love you, Animally. And I, okay, I'm going to read just little parts of it. I love you hugely like a whale. I love you shyly like a snail. Hold on, just a minute. I love you cleverly like a fox. Sorry. <laughs> I love you powerfully like an ox. I love you busily like a bee. I love you doggedly like a flea. That's my dog down there. Um, okay, so you kind of get the picture. I love you musically like a lark. I love you playfully like a ferret. And then at the very end it says, I love you exceedingly like a giraffe. I love you loyally like a dog. I love you enormously like a hog. I love you birdily, bugly, animally. I love you so for you are my family. You see it? Yay. Okay, so this is a precious board book. The pages are just like I'm a dirty dinosaur. They're a little thicker than just paper. 
um, a little stronger, and we love that when we're reading to our toddlers and younger kids who aren't ready for that type of book. So next is an awesome book. It's B is for Bedtime. I love it because it's when you read it, it's soft and it's quiet, but we go through every letter of the alphabet, and it is the perfect bedtime read. A is awake, how I feel after dinner. And the pages are the same too. B is for book with my dad, it's a winner. And so it goes through every letter in the alphabet. It shows the upper and lower case. And then it has an illustration on the other page to describe what we just talked about. We really need to break this book in. <laughs> Um, D is for Gran with an H for her hug. She tucks me in tight like a bug in a rug. And then we go Q is for quiet and R for my room. Little bit by nightlight that glows, lit by my nightlight that glows in the gloom. So it just gets softer and softer as you read it. And then at the end, whispering prayers for us all for relax. X for relax. Now I'm facing the wall. Y is for yawn and I'm ready for sleep. All hushed until morning, you won't hear a peep. Z is for z sleep. And then... At the end, it says good night. So I just love it that it's teaching them the alphabet, and it's a great quiet read for bedtime. And we'll go back to Alyssa. You know, something else I love about it, Joy, is I love the fact that the father is the one who reads them the story to go to bed. Because it's seen, and that's one thing I love about Kay Miller, is we have amazing dynamic fathers that are in the books. Because it seems like, as a general rule, um, like think about Bernstein Bears, the father's the bumbling little fool. And I love that we are building up fathers in a culture that sometimes doesn't. And so I love that. Sorry, little passion of mine. Um, another passion is the secret book. Books. So now with the secrets of the seashore and the apple tree and the rainforest, we now have secrets of winter. I'm totally in love with this book. Um, it's actually one of my favorites. They did go to having a new um, illustrator for this one. Um, but it has big, beautiful, bold pictures. Once again, um, I can't really show you too well this year. Trying to see if I can figure out how to make this work. Nope, can't. So like with the have. tree, um, you're going to have beautiful um, wax wings, you know, behind it. Um, right here we have the, the catkins are the seeds, but then again we see like a little grouse eating them. It is so beautiful. And um, Kira and I were discussing this at convention. She says this is her, her favorite in this series. She also let me know that they have no shortage of secret ideas coming. So that's good news for all of us big fans of secret books. And as you know, we don't just have secrets anymore. Now we are also on the, and so we've been on the train, but now we need to move to on the construction site. So on the construction site is fantastic book that exposes your youngest children to what it would be like to be a construction worker on a construction site. So right here, they get to look at the plans and the back of these plans shows you, you know, how the building would be and has a little bit of drawings and then it shows, you know, the trucks and what's coming in on them. Um, just all the different kind of stuff that you would see on construction sites. Sorry, it's kind of hard to show you here. I should have thought that through before I did this. But, um, you know, we have the nice, you know, this one right here of the welders and stuff. It's just a fantastic book to help littlest ones, especially if you're in a neighborhood maybe that has construction going on or maybe you pass big buildings or quite frankly, every kid likes construction. I mean, like seriously, I don't know many kids who don't. And um, so that's really fun. Another great book that we have is um, Double Trouble for Anna Hibiscus. So this is going to be a great book to share with um, somebody who's maybe about ready to become a big sister or a big brother. And it just talks about Anna Hibiscus getting double, double in trouble and having them come into their life. 
And again, I love this book because, you know, we have a lot of ethnic um, diversity in it. And, but it kind of shows how she just, you know, she's kind of feeling a little lost in her, you know, in the, with this new role. Like she wants to come in for her morning cuddles, but, you know, her mom is tired and she's sleeping. So her mom doesn't have time right now to do cuddles. And everybody's too busy again. Poor Anna Hibiscus. Everyone's always too busy for Anna Hibiscus. But in the end, it always works out. But I think it's how a lot of kids feel, especially right after a baby comes. Um, you know, I know that was something that my kids struggled with. And so, you know, you know, here she wants to like do something and they're all being like, shh, the babies are going to sleep, you know, and you need to be quiet. And so, you know, at the end she's crying, she cries to her dad right here. She's like, you know, everybody is so busy with double trouble. Nobody has time for me. Double trouble, Papa asks, those babies, those brothers. And Papa laughs and says, you'll have to share us with your brothers, Anna. And he goes, but it's not fair, cries Anna Hibiscus. And okay, I'm, again, again, sorry. I love the father figures in our books. You just see him loving on his daughter, even though she's throwing a tantrum and she's really struggling. He loves her and he just wants to know that that love is not conditional on anything. Sorry, emotional moment there. Um, anyways, but she smiles and then she looks at them. And so she actually starts to comfort them and, She's the only one who's really being able to help them get to quiet down. Um, anyway, so she's just, it's just a very sweet book about um, new babies and the, the challenges that a sister can have. But I think it's also good for us as adults to remember the challenges that our children go through. Um, and then the last picture, <laughs> the last picture book is 10 gorillas. I'm sorry. Anyways, this one here goes through a bunch of different types of monkeys. <laughs> it has chimpanzees and it has um, tamarinds and all that. And I'm going to ask Kira because I have to find out. So they, so it's like a counting book and you're counting by 10. Um, very unique situations. Like we have 60 and I think it's called macaws. Um, fishing in the sewer. Yuck. Yeah, I would think that'd be pretty gross. But so then the little fun thing is we're counting by tens, and then all of a sudden we get to 82. Just so you all know, this is like knowledge for you. Um, instead of 80, we go to 82. And I know that Kira has to have a reason for this. I really do, but I'm uncertain what that reason is yet. So I will find out and let everybody know. So, but it's a cute book that just kind of shows them all the different types of um, monkeys and um, how there's just too many of them that fit in just one hot air balloon and so it ends up being just 10 monkeys and there's one from each of the different species so um, it's a fun counting book um, and it's and again my children are asking for the book and <laughs> So that's really fun. So Joy is going to show us one of my daughter's favorite books. And then um, I'm going to just finish up with some of her new chapter books. I have to unmute myself. Okay. So this is not a math book. Um, this book reminds me of my high school geometry teacher. But this book is for nine and up. And when I started geometry, I had no clue what they were talking about. I had no clue you could have shapes in math. And I totally needed this book when I was nine to get that concept. So um, I love it. It's a workbook. They do all of their work inside. And it's a math and art book. At first glance, they might seem to be words apart, worlds apart. But look a little close, and you'll see that they have a lot in common. Math is full of patterns. So, you know, nobody can create a perfect circle. It teaches them how to create a perfect circle. Um, there's just tons of different shapes, triangles, and patterns in this book that they can work through. Um, the pages stay inside, but at the back, you have a take it further note. So if they want to take it further, they can for the older kids. And then there's all these graphing papers in the back that they can work on um, their little projects, which is really cool, too, because they have that extra space. Let me see. Um, the impossible triangle. It goes through how to draw the triangle um, and how to make it perfect. And then there's 3D art. There's um, just... It's so cool. 
Um, so if you have a child who needs this, they will love it. Um, those 9, 10, beginning junior high kids, end of elementary, this is a perfect book for them. So I'm going to go back to Alyssa. Um, I love it because I have a daughter who is very mathy. And it doesn't seem to be like a lot out there for mathy kids. And as you know, STEM or STEAM, those are like big buzz things going on now. And so being able to mix um, and have something that is fun for kids who really are into math just really excites me. Um, anyway, sorry. So we have new pocketbooks. So we had animals and reptiles. Well, now we also have birds and insects. I totally ordered, I thought insects, but apparently I didn't. So they look just like the other ones. They show you, you know, the different birds, um, where they are on the conservation list. Um, they're just fa fantastic little great reference guides. These books are fantastic also for the $5 book fairs. Super awesome. Um, so great for $5 book fairs. Yes. Um, next up, I'm just going to kind of buzz through the different series. I am a huge Sally Rippin fan. And thank you, Sally. Not that she's gonna watch this, but if she were, and see, I have a little daughter's head popping up. We got three more Billy Bees and three more Hey Jacks. Um, each of them deal with different situations, just like normal. So we have um, the toy sale. Um, he's gonna sell some old um, toys to make a little bit of money. In this one, I just got done reading, it's The Bravest Kid. Billy actually. She's not really a good friend in this one, just saying. She um she basically like, you know, tells him he's like a scary cat and then he ends up falling and hurting himself. And he like breaks his foot, but then she comes over to see him and she goes, You were so brave because you didn't even cry. <laughs> He broke his foot, poor kid. Anyways, but so it actually talks, though, I love the fact that it talks about, like, how to deal with those kind of situations because even our best friends sometimes trick us into doing things we shouldn't. Um, and then this one here is fun. Um, he, this is where he goes on a camp out. So for kids who are definitely into, like, the whole camping and, you know, Cub Scouts and all this kind of stuff, this is going to be a fun little adventure. It talks about maybe this adventure goes a little too far. Um, Billy B., we, she gets to um, move to this the big deep end swimming pool, and she's just a little bit scared about it. Um, I wonder if Jack called her scaredy cat. Just saying. Anyway, so um, this is a fun book to um, help kids overcome those fears. Um, the copycat kid, um, she's the new girl at school's buddy, but the girl copies every single thing Billy does, and that kind of gets annoying. Um, and how to deal with this. And this one is the Night Fright. Billy loves um, Rebecca's older sister, just says, um, they make her feel grown up, but they have a scary movie they watch, and she's not quite ready for it, and it scares her. So it kind of also is a great starting point conversation to be able to talk to your kids about um, what to do in those kind of situations. And we have two more series. Um, but one of them we have a special guest presenter for. Um, this is another series called Wheel Nuts. Um, it has beautiful, vibrant pictures, as you can see. Very vibrant pictures, very glossy pages. I don't really know what to say about this book. Um, I'm an adult, I will fully admit. But the only thing I could think of was that was a really dumb story. But I think it's just one of those silly, like, pointless kind of things that a lot of kids like. I mean, I know that sounds really bad, and I probably should be saying it that way. But it's just kind of like one of those books that's like, there's not, it's not like with Billy where there's kind of like an object lesson or something like this. This is just crazy fun. That's all it is. It's just crazy fun. It's totally supposed to be silly. And... They just, it's this whole series about this like road race adventure kind of thing, and they go to different places. And um, the cars like burp out like fairy dust, or they like, um, yes, the baby car like spits out a river of drool so they can get over quicksand. Again, it's just kind of like silly, silly stories. And you're following along on the race with um, the dino wagon, so it's these little dino dudes. And then you have the wheel deal, and they are um, these people who like to shop. They're like divas, I would say. And then you have like these little baby guys on this one, and then you have the little fairy people, and then you have some robots, and then you have a father and son team. I don't remember what they were called, but they're in the jumping jalopy. 
Anyways, so it's just totally silly, fun, kind of goofy, um, little adventures. Anyway, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. So now we have a, Maria, I need you. So we have a fantastic new series. I am beyond excited about the series. And this is my daughter, Maria, and she is going to tell you about Special Agent E.J. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is the this is the EJ twelve book series, and I have read all the books that I can find. One of my sisters have lost the first book, and so I didn't get to read the first book. So I shared with the second one. But for the most part, for all parts, this is an amazing book. It is about this girl who struggles with everyday life, but when she goes to, on her secret missions, everything feels easy, and so she wants. So when she goes on the secret missions, when she gets back, the secret missions actually help her to overcome her fears in her everyday life. And we're going to have to find her the first book. But this is a good selling point. I have a question. Could you understand the books without reading the first book? Yes. So they don't need to be read in order, but it's probably a good thing to read them in order just because the first book introduces you to, um, I think it's Emma Jacks, right? Emma is her Jacks. name? Emma Jacks. And... Um, the nice part about this is it's really clean reading. It teaches them about like environmental type issues, um, but in a fun kind of a way. And it gives them, it, someone, they, gives them someone they can are going to love this, especially because bullying is a problem in schools these days. Dealing with issues with kids is something. And at home, it's easy for us as parents to be like, well, this is what you can do, and we can even role play with them. But when they're in that moment, it's really hard for kids to sometimes to actually deal with it. And these books show, like this girl having these problems, but then kind of going on these special missions that make her realize, I can stand up, I can do this. And it's going to create a culture of, young people who are willing to stand up and say, no, this is just unacceptable. And so I'm really excited about these clean, cute, awesome books. And I'm hoping there's a lot more in them. I think my daughters are too. Um, as you can see, we've already read all the ones that they have. They have four of them so far in this series. Um, anyways, so we are so glad that you joined us for an overview of the catalog. Um, you know, there's other books that obviously we weren't able to go over yet because we don't have them. But we, oh, I just realized you could totally see that stack of books over there. I'm sorting through stuff. Anyways, clean my office, Julia Jones. Um, anyways, so thank you so much for coming. And um, thank you, Joy, for helping me present. And we hope that you all have a fantastic day.